also sorry for the imperfect audio. I did not bother most of the time to plug in the microphone as it was for the screen capture and the surface. So I wonder if our Octane patches destroy here the serial port of the origin because our Octane patches add support for serial keyboard and PS2 mouse for the IO3 system hub thing there and maybe that's the reason because I was running actually with all the Octane patches of, of course configured for IP27 but running with all the Octane patches in place so now I'm rebuilding our T2 IP30 kernel, MIPS kernel thing there with all the Octane patches moved into a disable directory just for the test. Let's see if my serial comes up then. It looks also that the serial is really connected on this kind of entry level server to, non, to some standard PC 80, 8250, whatever that was. Do we still have it here in the uh, scroll back? Yeah, maybe this is really connected to some 8250 here in this really curious because this is also and as you can see here's our IOC3 stuff and maybe that is not working flawlessly for the origin and here you can see the device nodes pointing to this serial to this 8250. This is also what was in the dev config so I think this could be right but of course this is the first week with the origin, so not yet disassembled and looked into all the circuits and such. Yep, that was it. Look at this, now we get serial output. So then I have some minor details to tweak in the IO3 Octane patches. But this is one of the most expensive videos I produced and it's not even looking good tinkering around here. Many more hours than I would normally want to admit. So. I spent so much time for nothing when this could have just have worked but now let's maybe see to get some more T2 properly installed and configured here. And again don't forget to share like and subscribe to support making all the stuff great again. So we could have had this serial look in many hours ago. What a pity. So now I guess I want to copy T2 to the local hard drive. For those who missed the earlier video, the password for the MIPS 64 Octane dumped image is test. I mentioned that briefly in the video, but in the meantime I forgot myself and someone asked and I couldn't remember, so root and test and let's see how this goes with the origin. Of course, really awesome to have a nice collection of different vintage machines and that is soon really the end for this video. So, using NetCut, as so often, we set standard compression to maximize the only 10 Mbit Ethernet and on the origin, the opposite NetCut set standard decompression. So, currently we get some around megabyte Ethernet load. And then I hope it just boots straight from the hard drive, but knowing my luck with the system, it may probably not just boot. I also should not forget to switch the kernel from the Octane dump to the origin kernel. And in general, I wonder why historically it was done so that the kernel, that the machine type, had to be chosen, like also for ARM for each board. Slightly inconvenient, not really seeing so many reasons why this could not be shared for the most part for the SGI systems but yeah maybe we can tweak this another year to come or better yet switching to GZIP here GZIP fast GUNZIP as this obviously was CPU limited also set standard should be faster maybe I should have used set standard fast anyway at least the Ethernet throughput hmm, 1.5 was higher so I'm not really sure. It's a pity I don't have secure shell lock in yet. Would have been interesting to find out how. Actually maybe yeah what we get maybe I just run it again with set standard fast just for the fun of it. So 
so 600 minus 1 and uh, hard to tell as obviously the compressed data is smaller so whatever don't really feel like running this twice now the stump will run long enough anyway also had to install XFS tools to file system check this as XFS cannot mount a file system with a different engine as of lock as this was mounted with little engine here in the x86 and XFS apparently cannot runtime Linux kernel mount this file system journal with engine is reversed also really funny realizing that all NFS access goes through the network to the USB dongle to the bridge interface to the virtual machine back through the virtual machine block IO stuff to the disk image back to the host system here and then obviously all the way back so just running some integrity checks there a little bit our package manager dash y to make sure that we really copied everything and this file system is not exploding immediately when we try to boot and mount it so after a lot of fiddling with arcs I finally managed that it would boot if I would have had edited the arc conf so what I want to document this time for YouTube for all those who endured watching to the end is that the last time on the Octane on the old YouTube video I had here a little bit unsharp but whatever XIO, PCI and so on and I wanted to try out if this Arx short version also works and it does work after a little bit of trial and error just that now I don't have a config for that and wonder if I can override this because this is the config name is IP30 and now we're running on IP27 so this obviously wouldn't just auto load so yeah more 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 and we have the first hard drive boot although not yet fully from the hard drive because I still used boot P to get the kernel just some little more investigation there but yeah, that's it for today. So one final note, this no system we got here from ArcLoad loading the system is here in the code of ArcLoad actually when this environment variable is not found. So let's try setting this and see if this finally gets us fully locally disk loading there. Ah, Unicode cleverish. The fun of modern terminals. Let's hope this time I don't have any special characters in there. And we're loading something from the disk, I hope. This warnings about this GCC trampoline stuff is only because this is, I think, Arcload compiled some years ago. I should probably another day test switching this to the newly compiled Arcload, but I was using this latest compiled arc load and such already for network loading so that should work just that I'm not always feeling so lucky to just update everything and risk it's not booting anymore especially as this lives in the volume header so yeah that's it for today we have this fully locally booting now and then next we can have more fun with the PS3 and Octane again